Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton. In this video, we're going to talk about the fundamentals of related rates. So this section is going to build on what we learned in the last section about implicit differentiation. So if you have several variables or you have quantities that are related to each other, and some of the variables are changing at a known rate, then we can use derivatives to determine how rapidly one of the variable changes based on how fast another variable changes. So the problem of finding a rate of change from other rates of change is what's called a related rates problem. So in particular, if the variables x and y are related by an equation, and both x and y are functions of time, then we can use implicit differentiation that we learned previously to find the rates of change for both of the variables with respect to time t. After taking implicit differentiation, then you'll have several rates of change involved. You'll have dx dt, so the derivative of x with respect to time. You'll have the derivative of y with respect to t. And you'll figure out an equation that involves dx dt and dy dt, or x prime and y prime. How are those two rates of change related? So in this video, we're going to solve application problems from business, economic, social science, life science, and physical sciences using related rates. So let's start talking about the fundamentals of related rates. We're going to first familiarize ourselves with the mathematics of related rates problems, and then we're going to apply the concept to application problems. So implicit differentiation is used to find the derivative of an equation involving multiple variables like x and y. But in this section, since we're talking about x representing a function of time and y is a function of time as well, then when we take the derivative, we'll have x prime and y prime, and those are dx dt or dy dt. So example one, related rates problems. Given that x is x of t, so that means x is a function of time, or t, y is a function of time, so y is equal to y of t, so x and y are functions of t. In addition, x and y are related by this equation, x squared plus 8y squared equals 12. So part one, determine the relationship between dx dt and dy dt, or x prime y prime. So since x and y are functions of time, t, then we can use implicit differentiation to find the derivative and introduce the rates of change. So take the derivative of this equation with respect to time t on both sides of the equation. So take the derivative of the left side, so take the derivative with respect to t of x squared plus 8y squared, and then do the same thing on the other side of the equation, take the derivative with respect to time of 12. So now keep in mind that x is a function of time and y is a function of time. So anytime you take a derivative of x, you have to multiply by the chain rule x prime. Every time you take the derivative of y, you get to use the chain rule as well to find y prime. So the derivative of x squared, that is a composite function because x is a function and you're squaring the function. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, but then you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule. So the derivative with respect to time of x plus the derivative of 8y squared, that's a composite function as well because y is a function of time. The derivative of 8y squared is 16y times the derivative of the inside function, and the inside function is y. So the derivative with respect to t of y equals the derivative of 12. 12 is a constant, so the derivative is 0. And so after you simplify, 2 times x times the derivative of x is x prime, plus 16 times y times the derivative of y with respect to t is y prime. So 2x times x prime plus 16y times y prime, and the other side of the equation is 0. This equation explains how x prime and y prime are related to one another. So one thing that we're going to realize after we use implicit differentiation to introduce the derivatives or rates of change x prime and y prime, there's going to be information in the problem that we can use to help us find what is the value of x prime or what's the value of y prime. So like number two, given that x equals two, y equals one, and dx dt is negative four, find the value of dy dt. So this is why it's called a related rates problem. You have information about x and y. You have information about this rate of change involving how fast does x change with time. You're asked to find how fast is y changing with respect to time. So if x equals 2, y equals 1, and x prime is negative 4, and we also have the equation from part 1 that tells us how x prime and y prime are related to one another, 2x times x prime plus 16y times y prime was equal to 0, then plug in the information that we have, 2 times x becomes 2 times 2, times x prime is negative 4, plus 16 times y, that's 16 times 1, because y is 1. y prime we do not know because we need to find what dy dt is, and the other side of the equation is 0. So notice you have one unknown in the problem, and it's y prime. So solve the equation for y prime now. So you have negative 16, after you multiply 2 times 2 times negative 4, plus 16 times y prime equals 0. Add 16 to both sides of the equation, so 16 times y prime equals 16, 
and then divide both sides of the equation by 16 to isolate the y prime, and you get y prime equals 1. So that means the function y is changing at a rate of change of 1. So now that we know the basics of related rates problems, we're going to talk more about application problems now. One of the most difficult steps in solving related rates problems is always about obtaining the equation that relates the variables in the problem, or if you have variables x and y. To assist with the problem solving process, we always have to follow these steps with related rates problems. The steps for solving related rates problems. So number one, sketch a picture, if relevant, and identify all relevant variables. So in the problem, they may tell us the variables and how they are related using an equation, but most of the time you may not have an equation and you may not be told what the variables are. So whatever's changing in the problem, that needs to be represented with a variable. And it helps to sketch a picture to help you find out what is that formula that relates all the variables together. Number two, find an equation connecting all the relevant variables. Most of the time after you draw your picture, it will involve a geometric formula that relates all the variables in the problem like area of a circle, a volume of a cylinder or a sphere, or maybe even the Pythagorean theorem. Number three, after you have the equation identified with variables that occur in the problem, differentiate, take the derivative, of the equation using implicit differentiation with respect to time t. So number four, after you differentiate both sides of the equation, you're going to introduce rates of change. Substitute the information given in the problem, so we might have information about the variable x, we might have information about the variable y, we might even have information about the related rate. Number five, solve for the unknown rate of change. So there will be one unknown rate of change in the equation and we'll need to solve for it. So like I said, very often the key in relating variables in related rates problems is drawing a figure or a picture that shows the geometric relationships between the variables in the problem. So let's talk about example two, area of a circle. Suppose the border of a town is roughly circular, and the radius of that circle has been increasing at a rate of 0.1 miles each year, so the town is expanding. Find how fast the area of the town has been increasing when the radius is 5 miles. So in other words, the town is a circular shape, and as the town increases, so does the size of the circle, and so the area changes of the circle as well. So notice in this problem, they don't tell us the variables in the problem, but there are a couple things that are changing the radius of the circle is changing, and the area of the circle is changing. So those need to be the variables. Let r be the radius of the town, and the radius was in miles, and let capital A represent the area of the town, and that is in miles squared, or square miles. So that's the first step in the related rates problems. Draw a picture, and then represent all the variables that are unknown in the problem, so radius and area. Step two, what is an equation that involves radius and area of a circle? It's a equals pi r squared. So this is the equation for this problem that we need. In addition, there's also information in the problem that we were given. So the radius of the circle is increasing at a rate 0.1 miles each year. So that's not talking about r. It's talking about r prime. It's the rate that the radius is increasing. So r prime is 0.1 miles per year. And they want us to find the rate of change, how fast is the area changing? So that's A prime. Find A prime when the radius is five miles. So find the rate of change, A prime, when R equals five miles. So now we're on the third step. Differentiate the equation, the area of a circle equation, with respect to time t. Keep in mind that the A is a function of time and R is a function of time. So anytime you take the derivative of R, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, r prime, using the chain rule. And same thing with the derivative of a. Anytime you take the derivative of a, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is a prime, using the chain rule. So let's take the equation, a equals pi r squared. Use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to time t. So take the derivative, d dt of the left side of the equation, which is a, equals Take the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to t, so d dt of pi r squared. So now take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of a is 1 times the derivative of the inside function, a prime, equals pi is the coefficient, so it stays. What's the derivative of r squared? r squared is the composite function, so the derivative of the outside function is 2r times the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the inside function is d dt of r. And so a prime equals... 2 times pi times r times the derivative of r with respect to time is r prime. 
And so that's the third step, differentiate the equation with respect to time, and we did. So we have this rate of change A prime, and we have this rate of change R prime related to each other using this formula. And now use the information that was given in the problem so we can find the unknown rate of change. Substitute R prime was 0.1 miles per year, and the radius was five miles. So plug this information into this equation involving related rates. So A prime is two times pi times the radius is five miles, times r prime was 0.1 miles per year. And so after you simplify, 2 times 5 times 0.1, you'll get 1 times pi. And so the answer is just pi, or approximately 3.14. And now since this is talking about a prime, a was talking about area of a circle. How fast is the area of a circle changing? It's square miles, or miles squared, per year. So 3.14 square miles per year is how fast the town is increasing in area. All right, so we saw in the previous example that you can use the geometric formula such as the area of a circle to help you find out how the rates are related to one another. Let's try example three this time. We're going to talk about the volume of a sphere. A spherical snowball is melting in the hot sun. Its diameter is decreasing at a rate of 0.5 centimeters per minute. So the size of the spherical snowball is, is decreasing. How fast is the volume of the snowball decreasing when the diameter of the snowball is 20 centimeters? So step one of related rates problems is draw a figure that relates all the variables in the problem. So let's draw a figure that is representing a sphere or a spherical snowball. We have the diameter would go all the way across the sphere. Oh, we also know that the radius is half the diameter. So the radius of the snowball will be represented with an R. And we're also talking about the volume of the snowball. So here are the two variables. Let D represent the diameter of the spherical snowball, which is in centimeters. That's unknown in the problem, how large is the diameter, and let V represent the volume, because volume is unknown in the problem, of the spherical snowball, and the volume is in cubic centimeters, or centimeters cubed. So that's the first step in the problem. Now the second step is to write out what is an equation that relates all the variables in the problem using a geometric formula. So since we're talking about volume of a sphere, the volume of a sphere is V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So notice in the formula that the volume is based on the radius of the circle. Well, in the problem, we're talking about diameter. There's a relationship between the diameter and the radius. The diameter is twice the radius, or d equals two times r. So we need to take this r from the formula for volume and replace it in terms of d for diameter. Or if you solve for r, you'll get r equals d over two. So go back to the volume formula and replace the r with d divided by two. So v equals four thirds times pi, times d over 2 instead of r, and that's cubed. Now simplify. You have 4 thirds pi times d cubed in the numerator, and 2 cubed is 8 in the denominator. And now if you simplify, you'll have 24 in the denominator and 4 in the numerator. So 4 divided by 24 reduces the 1 sixth pi d cubed. So this is the formula for the volume of a sphere where you know the diameter. Why this formula is so important is because now we have an equation that relates V and D. So now we're ready to take the derivative using step three. Use implicit differentiation to take the derivative on both sides of the equation where the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to is T, time. So if the equation is V equals 1 sixth pi times D cubed, take the derivative of the left side with respect to T, so D dt of V equals the derivative of the right side of the equation, so D dt of 1 sixth pi times D cubed so the derivative of v is 1, but since v is a function, you have to take the derivative of the inside function, which is v prime. So the left side of the equation is v prime. Now the right side of the equation. So you have 1 6 times pi. That's a coefficient, so you'll keep it. What's the derivative of d cubed? That's a composite function, so you have to use the chain rule. The derivative of d cubed is the derivative of the outside function, 3d squared, times the derivative of the inside function is d dt of d. And so after you simplify, v prime is the left side of the equation. 3 divided by 6 reduces the 1 half times pi times d squared, and the derivative of d with respect to time is d prime. So notice what we have. After we've taken the derivative, we have v prime is a related rate on one side of the equation, and we have d prime is the other related rate on the other side of the equation. So now we can substitute information that was given in the problem for d and d prime. d prime is telling us how fast is the diameter changing. Well, the diameter was decreasing by 0.5 centimeters per minute. So since the diameter is decreasing, it's gonna be a negative value. So d prime is negative 0.5.
and the diameter is 20 because they tell us to find what is the volume when the diameter is 20 centimeters. So substitute these values into the equation involving the related rates. So V prime is what we're trying to find, how fast is the volume changing. So 1 half times pi, the diameter of the snowball is 20 centimeters, so 20 squared, times how fast is the snowball melting. It's losing a diameter of 0.5 centimeters per minute. So after you simplify, you'll have 20 squared, that's 400. 400 times negative 0.5, that's negative 200, times a half, that's negative 100, and then you have pi. So the volume is changing at a rate of negative 100 times pi. So after you type this into a calculator, you'll have one, negative 100 times pi, which is approximately negative 314.16 if you ran into two decimal places. So the change in the volume is negative 314.16. The volume is in cubic centimeters, so centimeters cubed, and the time was changing by minute. So negative 314.16 centimeters cubed per minute. Let's try another problem now. Example four, related rates problems. An offshore well located 100 miles off the coast of Florida is leaking oil, forming a circular oil slick about 0.9 inches or 0.075 feet thick that is increasing at a constant rate of 50 cubic feet per hour. Determine the rate of increase of the radius of the oil slick when the radius is 80 feet. So again, let's start with the first step. Draw a picture that relates all the variables in the problem. We don't know what the radius of the oil slick is, and we don't know its volume either. So let's use R again for the radius of the oil slick, which is in feet. And we also don't know the volume, so let's use V to represent the volume of the oil spill. And this will be in cubic feet or feet cubed. And again, R and V are going to be functions of time. The radius is changing with time and the volume is changing with time for this oil spill. And now for the picture. So the oil spill is expanding. We're talking about a circular oil slick, but the thickness of the oil spill or oil slick is 0.075 feet. So we're talking about a cylinder. And so there is a formula that relates the volume with the radius and the thickness. There's V equals the area of the circle, so pi r squared, times the thickness or the height of the cylinder, which is h. So that's the second step for the related rates problem. You have the formula that relates the radius, the height, and the volume as this formula. So there's also information given in the problem. Notice that all the units are in terms of feet or cubic feet. So we're not gonna use 0.9 inches. We're gonna use the height, h, is 0.075 feet thick. And now we're gonna find what is the rate of increase of the radius. So we need to find what is r prime, when the radius is 80 feet and the volume is changing at 50 cubic feet per hour. So V prime is 50 feet cubed per hour. So we'll get to this information later in the problem. The third step is to use implicit differentiation to take the derivative with respect to time t on both sides of the equation. So here's our formula that relates volume, radius, and height of a cylinder. We're going to take the derivative with respect to time. So the derivative with respect to time on the left side of V equals the derivative with respect to time of the right side of the equation, pi r squared h. So the derivative of the left side, we talked about this a couple times already. The derivative of v is 1, but then you take the derivative of the inside function because v is a function of time. The derivative of the inside function is v prime equals, now how do you find the derivative of pi r squared h? r is a function of time, h is a function of time. So you have a product of two functions here. You have to use the product rule to find its derivative. So pi is a coefficient, you'll keep it. Now I use the product rule. You have the first function, r squared unchanged, times the derivative, so ddt of the second function, which is derivative of h, plus the second function stays the same, times the derivative with respect to time of the first function, which is r squared. So all of this is multiplied by pi, the coefficient. And now we're ready to take the derivatives. v prime is pi times r squared is the first function, unchanged. The derivative of h is h prime, plus h is the second function, unchanged. What's the derivative of r squared? r squared is the composite function, so the derivative of the outside function is 2r, times the derivative of the inside function, so ddt of r. So this means that v prime is equal to pi times r squared times h prime, plus 2h times r times the derivative of r with respect to time is r prime. And so now we have a formula that relates the related rate for the volume with the related rate of the radius. So substitute in the information given in the problem. The radius was 80 feet. H prime is zero because the oil thickness is not changing. The volume is changing though. It's 50 cubic feet per hour. 
So plug this information into the equation that we found for the related rates problem. The left side of the equation is 50 for V prime equals pi times the quantity R squared, so that's 80 squared, H prime is 0, plus 2 times H, the thickness is 0 0.075, and then the R is 80. Information about R prime is what we're trying to find. We want to find what is the rate of increase of the radius. So R prime is the unknown in the problem. So the left side of the equation is 50 equals pi times 80 squared times 0, that's 0, 2 times 0 0.075 times 80, that gives you 12, times R prime. So now we're solving for R prime, so divide both sides of the equation by 12 and pi. So R prime is 50 divided by 12 and divided by pi. So 50 divided by 12 pi, which is approximately 50 divided by, make sure you have the denominator in parentheses because you want 12 times pi first, you get 1.33 when you round the two decimal places. So R prime is about 1.33. Radius was in feet, so this is feet per hour. So the radius of the oil slick is increasing 1.33 feet per hour. So let's try one more problem. The last couple examples involved a geometric formula. This time we're going to talk about business application. So example five, rates of change in advertising and sales. An appliance company selling refrigerators in Michigan has monthly sales and advertising expenses related to the equation x times y subtract 11.2 times x plus 30 times y equals zero, where x represents the amount spent on advertising in thousands of dollars, and y represents the number of refrigerators sold thousands of units. At present, the company sells 3.2 thousand refrigerators and has a monthly advertising expense of $12,000. The company decides to increase the monthly advertising expenses at a rate of $1,400 a month determine the rate of increase of the appliance company sells. So there's a lot of information given in this problem. You have the equation given to you in the problem, so we don't have to actually have to find the equation. It's provided here, but we also have information about X and Y and a rate of change. So we are told that there are 3.2 thousand refrigerators sold. Y is representing the number of refrigerators sold. So Y is 3.2 thousand refrigerators when the monthly advertising expenses is 12,000, X is talking about advertising amount, so X is $12,000, and we also have a rate of change given in the problem. The company decides to increase the monthly advertising expenses at a rate $1,400, so that's $1.4,000 per month. So we have an equation, and we also have these values given in the problem. But we know we have to use implicit differentiation because X is a function of time, y is a function of time. So use implicit differentiation to take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of the equation. So here's the equation given in the problem. x times y subtract 11.2 times x plus 30 times y equals zero. Take the derivative of the left side of the equation with respect to time. So ddt of the left side of the equation equals the derivative of the right side of the equation with, with respect to time. So ddt of zero. Now notice you have x times y. x is a function of t. y is a function of t. So this is a product of two functions. You have to use the product rule. So first function, x, times the derivative of the second function, so ddt of y, plus the second function, unchanged, times the derivative of the first function, so times ddt of x, subtract 11.2 times x. So the derivative of the outside function is 11.2. Now, since x is a function of time, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule. So ddt of x plus... 30 times y. Again, y is a function of time, so the derivative of 30y is 30 times the derivative of the inside function. ddt of the inside function is y. And the derivative of 0 on the other side of the equation is 0. So let's take all the derivatives. We have x times the derivative of y, so that's x times y prime, plus y times the derivative of x, so that's y times x prime. Subtract 11.2 times the derivative of x, again that's x prime, plus 30 times the derivative of y is y prime equals zero. So you have an equation that relates x prime and y prime with this equation. So now we're ready to plug in the information that was given in the problem. y is 3.2, x is 12, and x prime is 1.4. So after you plug in those values into the equation, you'll have 12 times y prime plus 3.2 times 1.4 for x prime minus 11.2 times 1.4 again plus 30 times y prime. Now y prime we don't have any information about, but that's what we're trying to find in the problem. Determine the rate of increase of the company's sales. So that's talking about how fast the sales increase in the refrigerators, which is y prime.
So 12 times y prime plus 3.2 times 1.4, that's 4.48. Subtract 11.2 times 1.4, that's 15.68, plus 30 times y prime equals zero. Combine any like terms you have, so 4.48, subtract 15.68, and then move it to the other side of the equation away from the y prime, so you'll get 11.2. 12 y prime, 30 y prime, that's 42 y prime, so 42 y prime equals 11.2, and now we want to solve for y prime, so divide both sides of the equation by 42. y prime is 11.2 divided by 42, which is approximately 0 0.27 when you round the two decimal places. So y prime is approximately 0 0.27. Now y was talking about thousands of refrigerators sold, so this is 0 0.27 thousand sales of refrigerators per month because time was given in months. So this finishes our discussion on the fundamentals of related rates problems. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about related rates and motion problems.